Today, we celebrate a great and a profound resurrection. No, Easter hasn't arrived yet. And I know we just lost an hour with daylight savings time, but no, we just haven't lost two weeks. What we celebrate today is the great resurrection of our brother Lazarus. And usually in our Bibles and through the, this scripture reading is referred to as the raising of Lazarus. Well, I looked through eight different translations of the Bible and only one, a 1966 Jerusalem version referred to today's gospel as the resurrection of Lazarus. And to me, it more accurately describes what happens in this story from our gospel. Outside of the passion narratives that we'll be hearing in the next week, this is one of the longest stories in the gospel. So it must be important. And secondly, we know that John doesn't tell any story without weaving great symbolisms that teach us profound theologies of our faith. When I say symbolisms, it's not to say that question the events and the truths of what happened. Lazarus was raised from the dead. He was resurrected. It's just that in the telling of the story, John has an agenda and uses the events of Jesus' life to teach us and lead us to deeper and richer meanings and truths about our faith. And in light of this particular season of Lent, this year in 2020, which may someday be known as the spring of the coronavirus, let's look at the story through the eyes of Mary and Martha in their conversations with Jesus. And I think there's a message for us today. Looking at the big picture, Martha and Mary knew that Lazarus was ill and perhaps dying. So that's why they sent for Jesus and said, Master, the one that you love is ill. They were expecting him to rush in, to be there. But we see a different outcome, don't we? Jesus takes his time. He's not in any rush. In fact, he waits two days and then he responds. He didn't act on Martha and Mary's timeline, did he? Jesus was acting on God's time. And he states to the apostles that the purpose of his timing was, this is all happening for the glory of God. The disciples didn't understand how the story would unfold, and neither did Martha and Mary, the two sisters. Aren't we kind of in that same boat today? We're facing a crisis like we've never seen in our lifetime. This virus has caused a chaos in our lives, fear and anxiousness about our health, fear and anxiousness about our financial well-being, and fearing and anxiousness about our families, our friends, and anxiousness about our future. I don't think any of us is exempt from these feelings. We're praying and crying out with great fervor to God, Master, our society, your children, your creation is hurting. We're all in danger. Lord, the ones you love are ill. And to us, God can't act fast enough to alleviate this suffering. Well, my friends, we must realize and learn from our gospel that all of this is happening on God's time. And we must surrender to his timing. He will bring about his victory, just as he did for Lazarus. Now, for a minute, back to our gospel. We see that Jesus does show up on the scene. Martha goes out to meet him and says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. In the exchange that follows, Jesus tests Martha's faith. He talks about the resurrection. And she says, yes, I believe in the resurrection. And then he puts that important statement and that question to her. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then here it comes. He says, do you believe this? That simple and profound question. Do you believe this? And Martha says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is the one who is coming into the world. So Jesus immediately is taking the focus off of Lazarus' death by reminding Martha that everything he teaches, his whole message, his whole reason for being transcends this earthly life. He is concerned with eternal life where no one will die, but live on forever in God's presence. Today, we're faced with those same feelings that Martha expressed. God, where are you? I don't see you in anything that's happening around me in the world. Our whole life is turned upside down and our livelihoods are on the line. If only you were here, nothing bad would happen. Lord, if you had been here, this would not be happening to us. 
And Jesus is saying to each one of us and questioning us like he did Martha, what is it that you believe? All of these things that you see before you today, you will rise again and you will rise above them. Do you believe this? He's probably pointing a finger in our direction and saying, do you really believe and have faith in me? And here's the test. If we're only concerned with the temporal things of this life, and we're only concerned with our wants and our plans and our existence, then we're going to hesitate with that answer. But if we're concerned with our eternal existence, with the existence that God created for us, this life beyond our life here, concerning and sharing God's love for us, spreading that love to others, no matter what the situation is, then we are answering as Martha did. Yes, Lord, even faced with all the daunting things that I see before me, I trust you. I know you are here. I know you have my back. And I know that your love for me is beyond anything that I can imagine. And in that trust, I do have faith. And I surrender everything to you. My friends, this coronavirus will not win. In fact, our faith tells us that we're not fighting this situation alone. God is with us. He's all around us. And our families, our friends, our parish, even though we're not physically here to be together, He is here with us through one another. I think many of us this Lent had no idea what God was going to be asking us to give up in addition to what we were already going to sacrifice. The sacrifices we're making do make a difference. And we'll see how that folds, unfolds over the next week when we celebrate the Paschal Mystery, where we see that Jesus wins. He has won salvation for all of us who embrace it and live it. This is the faith that combats our fear and our anxiousness. It's a faith that trusts and allows everything to unfold in God's time. It is a faith that allows Jesus to command like he does at the end of our gospel, untie him and let him go. Like Lazarus, we can be untied and unbound from the fears and anxieties by letting God be in charge and allow his grace to envelop us and carry us to the future of eternal life.